In this video, I'm going to show you can add a map to your bubble app and then add markers to it to represent different locations. If you take a look at the database behind this particular application, we have a bunch of addresses here, a bunch of latitudes and longitudes, and that's what's been represented on the map by these markers. Throughout this video, we're going to be using Mapbox. Mapbox is a service that lets you add interactive maps to your application. So if you head over to mapbox.com, you're going to be able to sign up to an account. And once you've done that, you're going to be given access to the Mapbox dashboard. Now, Mapbox is a paid service, but they have a really generous free tier. You can see here some of the kind of metrics you can use on the free plan. And I haven't got anywhere near the limits on them. But once you've created an account, what you're going to need to do is go into the tokens section and click on create a token. I'm going to call this demo app token. You don't need to worry about all of this, but you should consider restricting your token to a specific URL. So in my case, I'm going to be using this bubble application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get everything just before a version test. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it in here. And this means that your token is only ever going to be able to use for this specific URL, which just means bad actors won't be able to use it on their own website. So I'm going to click add URL, then I'm going to create the token. And you can see here, I now have my demo app token. And in order to use Mapbox in our bubble application, we're going to need to install a plugin. So I'm going to go to the plugins tab of my bubble editor, and I'm going to search for this plugin here, the beautiful maps Mapbox plugin, which is a Cranford tech plugin. And once I have it installed, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to add my token to these two fields. Now, sometimes people ask me, do I need a separate token for dev versus production? The answer is no use the same token in both fields so i'm going to go back to my mapbox dashboard i'm going to copy this demo app token back to my bubble editor and paste it into these two fields there and now that we've installed the beautiful maps mapbox plugin and we've added our access token what we can do is under elements we should have access to the mapbox map element so i'm going to drag that onto my screen i'm going to let it take up the full width of the container and i'll give it a min height of let's say 450 pixels. Um, then I'm going to go to preview and let's just take a look and see how it looks. So this is our map. Now a couple of things we'd like to change about this. First of all, I always recommend if you're at least not having issues removing debug mode because they can sometimes mess up the bottom of the map. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Refresh. Yeah, and you can see it's taking up more space now. The second thing is, it's a bit zoomed out at the moment. I'd like to be zoomed in a bit closer. So what I can do is, on my map box map element, I'll make that a fixed height as well, actually. On the appearance, I'm going to change the zoom to 13. And then I'm going to refresh my application. And we'll see, we're going to get a bit of a closer look on that. Okay, that's a bit better. Maybe even slightly too close. So let's go back to 12. And I think that should do fine. Okay, so we now want to add a list of locations and have a marker for each of the locations on our map. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new workflow and it's going to happen when the page is loaded. And what we're going to do is under element actions, we're going to have access to this add list of markers to a map box map. And this is basically the action we use to add locations and markers onto our map. And you can see here, there is a bunch of fields. Not all of them are required, but the ones we definitely need to fill out are these two here, the longitudes and the latitudes. So we're going to need a list of longitudes and latitudes that will represent each location. And I've just created here a list of eight locations in the spreadsheet, let's just zoom in on that. You can see there, they're very tourist locations around London. So what I could do is simply enter these directly into my database. But of course we need a data type to actually store these locations. So what I'm going to do is in data, I'm going to create a new data type called location. And I'm going to give it three custom fields. The first one is going to be longitudes, or longitude, I should say, and it's going to be a number. Latitude is also going to be a number.
And then what we can do is we can put in one for address and it's going to be a type of geographic address. This isn't going to be strictly necessary, but I do want to show you how you might incorporate it in a bit. OK, so now that we have these, what we could do is simply go to our database, click on new entry. and Let's type in for the first one, the Tower of London. And we'll put that in there. The latitude is going to be that. And the longitude is going to be this value here. We paste that in and we get that. But of course, you might prefer for your users to actually be able to upload the locations themselves. So what you can also do is you can create a separate page in your application or it can even be on the same page. But what I've added here is simply three elements, a text element, an input, where I've set the content format to be address, and then finally, the submit location button. And there's nothing quite on that yet. But let's just preview. And when we preview that, let's say we wanted to add in our second location here, which is Buckingham Palace. Let's say we put in that. That's not really what we want because we want the user to be able to kind of choose from a, a list of searchable locations, if that makes sense. So instead of an input, what I'm actually going to do here is change our input element to a search box. So I'm going to put that up here. I'm going to put this first. And for the search box, we're going to say choice of style is going to be geographic places. So we're going to refresh our app. And again, let's say we want to add Buckingham Palace. And you can see there it's coming up. So we're able to choose the location. And when a user clicks on the submit location button, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new thing. The thing is going to be a location. The address is going to be equal to the search box A's value. And then the latitude is going to be equal to search box, A, search box A's values. And then you can see here under other operators, we have the option to add in the latitude. And we're going to do the same for the longitude, search box A's values, latitude. And then once we've created the location, we're simply going to reset the relevant inputs. So let's refresh. And this time we're going to add in Buckingham Palace again. And let's submit our location. And let's take a look at our database. And you can see there we're getting an address and we're getting the latitude and longitude values. But it looks like I've made a mistake here because the latitude and longitude are exactly the same. So let's have a look and see what I did wrong there. Under location, yeah, I put in a latitude for both. I should have changed that to longitude. So let's just delete that again. And let's add it in one more time. And let's take a look. And yeah, that looks more likely. And let's just see that it matches up with what we have here in our spreadsheet. And yeah, I think I actually forgot to put the minus in front of this in my database. So what I'm going to do in, sorry, minus, and uh, I think I forgot to put the minus in front of this in my spreadsheet. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly upload all of these locations. I'm going to fast forward through it because it's not the most interesting thing to watch. And just as I was doing that, I can see I have an error in here. And the reason we've gotten this error is because we've actually exceeded the limit of the kind of free Google Geocode API calls that come with our standard bubble plan. So if you go into your bubble editor, and if you go into settings, and if you scroll down here under general, you'll see there's two fields here, Google Geocode API key and Google Map API key. And Bubble actually uses Google's APIs behind the scene to make sure that it can search for the geographic addresses. So if you're going to use this method of uploading the locations via the search bar, then you're going to need to fill out your API keys here pretty quickly. There's actually some pretty good documentation on how to do this, so I'm not going to go through this here. I'm just going to go behind the scenes and paste my own. But if you follow these instructions, you're going to be able to add them in. Okay, I've added in my Google API keys, and you can see our error here has gone. Let's keep an eye on that as we add in more locations. And I think the next one we're going to do was Tower of London. So let's add that in. And we can see this time in our database, yeah, we don't have any issues. So let me just quickly add in the rest of those locations. 
Okay, I've added all of those in. If we take a look at our database, you can see we have them all here. And our next task is going to be to load these onto our map. So we're gonna go back to our workflow tab. And you might remember on the index page, we had this add list of markers to Mapbox map action. And what I'm gonna do for the longitudes field is just do a search for locations. And we're gonna go for each item's longitude. Now, you may have seen when I did this, there was actually an option to go for each item's address as well. And you could do that as well. And then with the address, simply get the longitude. So you don't have to save down the longitude to your database. You could get it from the address here. But I don't like doing this because every time you use something with a geographic address, you're using the Google API. And that's fine. They have a pretty generous free tier, but let's avoid using it, I think, whenever possible. So that's why I like to save down the kind of hard longitude, latitude values to my database. So I'm going to change this back to each item's longitude. And then for the latitudes, I'm going to say do a search for locations, each item's latitude. And that's all it is. So let's go and take a look. I'm actually just going to make my map slightly bigger in terms of height. And let's take a look. And let's take a look at the index page. I'm just get that by deleting this. And you can see here we have our markers loaded in. Now it wasn't initially kind of over the key area. So what I'm going to do is instead of having my map load by these default longitude and latitude values. What I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to search for the first location in my database and I'm going to get its longitude and I'm going to say the same for latitude. But I'll just change that just so we're actually looking at the area of our map where the markers are. Okay and I think what we did there is we have one marker that's a bit more out here and we're doing that. So you can hard code values in here in my case, I think I'm actually just going to go for last item because I know that's going to be more central. But hopefully you get the idea and you understand that you might want to just show the part of the map where the most markers are when you're loading it. Okay, and you can see our markers are appearing there. So there's loads you can do with Mapbox and this plugin. I have another video I'm going to link to below about how you can add custom icons where you don't necessarily just have to use the default ones. But at a high level, that's how you add markers to a map in bubble.